So the E-Tool is a new DLC weapon from Season 2 of Black Ops Cold War and you can unlock it for free with a weapon challenge in multiplayer and warzone and today I'll show you guys how to complete this challenge to unlock it as easily and quickly as possible. So I'm going to quickly explain the challenge, give you guys the best class setup and game modes for this and then some quick tips to help you get the challenge done faster. Obviously make sure to stick around until the end of the video so you don't miss out on any important tips. I'll probably put some timestamps in the description too. Okay so to get this E-Tool, the challenge says that using a melee weapon, kill 3 enemies without dying in 15 different matches. So obviously this basically means get a 3 kill streak with a melee weapon and do that 15 different times. Now obviously this can only be one time per match so they can't stack unfortunately and also as a quick note it needs to be done in 15 completed matches so you can't leave early because if you leave the game early the progress will seem to count initially but then after you come off the game or if you restart the game the progress will reset so you must stay until the match finishes or it won't count. And you can obviously check if your kill counted by checking the challenge progress bar on game so you know you click the settings you go to your change your class you hover over the class you want press triangle or y to edit it and then click on the melee weapon so you like your knife or whatever and then you just need to scroll down to the e-tool hover over that and it will tell you how many of those 15 matches you've got a three kill streak in and how much progress you've done obviously it's best to check it before the match starts so you know what you're on and then obviously you can tell whether you've gone up one point or not what about the class setup then well for the primary you can put on something like a light weapon so i went for like an smg but it doesn't really matter too much what you go for because you won't really be using it although if there is a primary weapon that you need a camo challenges done or to leveling up for you can always put that on so put on your primary and then for the secondary you can either put on the knife the normal combat knife or you can put on the wakizashi melee weapon kind of like that samurai sword those are probably the two best to go for because they're faster the other ones like the sledgehammer and the machete are quite slow so i wouldn't recommend going for those but if you've got the wakizashi unlock definitely try and use that otherwise just go for the normal combat knife then for the perks you're going to want to put on a perk greed wild card and then for the first perk category you want to put on flak jacket which allows you to take less damage from enemy explosives and molotov or combat bow flames you can also put on tactical mask so you get max resistance to flashbang and stun grenades and um, you're also immune to gas so basically if you throw any stun grenades yourself and you accidentally walk into it you won't take as much effect from that and also other people throwing them at you you won't really take much stun or effect from it either so it's obviously good in that regard so it helps you to focus on the task in the second category i've gone for quarter master which allows you to recharge your equipment over 25 seconds so you can keep recharging your tacticals and i'll talk about that in a second you can also put on tracker so you can see the imprint of enemy footsteps and obviously this helps you to find where the enemies are run up behind them and kind of catch them off guard to get kills and again we'll talk about that strategy later on finally in perk 3 we've gone for ghost so you're undetectable by spy planes whenever you're moving or planting and defusing bombs or controlling streaks stuff like that so obviously you want to stay off the radar so people don't know where you are and then also we can put on ninja so you can move more quietly uh, your footsteps don't make as much noise but also your character only speaks when it's absolutely necessary so you're not giving out noises to tell people where you are on the map so it's good so you can be a bit more stealthy healthy and gut people which is exactly what we want. Now for the equipment I've put on a tomahawk as a lethal. I would say only use this if it's absolutely necessary like to get rid of an unwanted enemy for example to avoid dying at a longer range fight so if someone's trying to shoot you you could always throw this and try and kill them. You don't want anything that's going to cause damage to you accidentally or you know anything that's going to make loads of noise like grenades and c4 and stuff so that's why tomahawk good just if you need it to pick someone off so you can focus on getting kills with the knife but really what you mainly want to focus on is your tactical which is the stun grenade which you can use to throw at enemies to stun them obviously you know that slows their movement and they're not able to quite see properly so it kind of slows their movement they're not able to react to you and it's easier to come up to them and knife them which is obviously exactly what you want because obviously you've only got a knife and it's easy for them to shoot you and it's more difficult for you to run up to them and kill them so obviously that's why the stun grenades are helpful and that's why we want the quartermaster perk so we can keep recharging stun grenades to have multiple ones in a single life to help you get this challenge done i then put on the field mic or the jammer for the field upgrade and that's just to either see enemies on the map or to scramble people's mini maps so they can't see you but obviously i didn't end up really needing this too much so it's good to put on and use if you need to but if not don't worry it's obviously it can be helpful in some situations but not all of them so what about the maps and modes well in multiplayer nuketown 24 7 is really really good obviously it's pretty much always there so you can always use that it's good for getting these combat knife kill streaks so you can be good for that however the matches are a little bit longer and obviously you have to stay in the match i'll kind of talk a little bit later on about the best mode for you but i think in general nuketown 24 7 you can't go wrong with but if you're in a rush 
face off is really really good as well and particularly one of the best maps is icbm it's a small circular map but obviously it's got loads of little flank routes and there's you can um, go above people below people so it's really good for getting around people and kind of uh, stabbing them when they least expect it to to get this challenge done so face off if you can get the kills done in face off then use that otherwise nuketown 24 7 is really good as well and there's other modes as well like free for all and there's also objective modes like domination or hard point so that enemies focus on the objective and, and leaving you to run up and kind of uh, stab people so it's up to you guys but those are the main kind of modes for multiplayer but in terms of warzone the main mode is plunder so you get infinite lives immediate custom loadout etc however if you don't like plunder there are a few other ways we'll talk about the, the strategy for plunder and warzone later on but if you don't like plunder you can also see if they've got any limited time modes so sometimes they have like warzone rumble for example which is kind of like a tdm mode but in warzone and that's obviously a little bit more like multiplayer so it helps you to get this challenge done faster there's also other limited time modes and at the moment they've got a kingslayer trios tdm mode in warzone so that's out right now don't know how long it'll be there for probably at least a week or two so definitely try that out and see if that helps you at all gets a little bit faster than in normal plunder and then obviously occasionally they have free to play weekends as well where you can play multiplayer to kind of try it out because they're trying to get people to buy the game so there was one that ended just over a week ago so look out for these they happen every now and then so if there's any definitely see if you can try and get all these kind of challenges done in one but if not like i say plunder can probably do okay but obviously it's a lot slower than normal multiplayer but we'll talk about strategy later on for plunder if you're interested in that but anyway so those are kind of the main modes now let's talk about the strategies for multiplayer and then obviously move on to warzone as well so your main kind of strategy especially for multiplayer is to kind of run to an enemy and knife them obviously and ideally you want to try and catch them off guard so for example knifing them in the back and obviously for this you can use the track perk to see footsteps and follow people because obviously you'll be behind them and they're in front of you so it's easier to kind of run up to them but you could also kind of um, knife them in the side as well if you get a chance whatever it is uh, you can even knife them from the front but obviously it's it's harder because if they're facing you they're more likely to shoot you and kill you and obviously you've got a knife so it's a bit more difficult so that's why it's probably best to try and knife them from the side or from behind you obviously want to try and flank around the edges of the map too you know get into spawns pick people off you're very vulnerable obviously with a combat knife like i say so when coming across a group of people try to focus only on one person you could obviously also use your primary weapon to take down any enemies that are a little bit further away they're more likely to get you you could also use the tomahawk like i say but i would just say in general just try not to engage with these longer range gunfights because obviously you'll lose because you haven't got a gun you've only got a, a knife and obviously in general you need to be quite close to the enemies to get these kills done properly obviously use stun grenades as much as possible to catch enemies off guard and prevent them from shooting you down that's really good but obviously it's not always the case and if you're about to throw a stun grenade and an enemy comes up to you you can immediately press the knife button and it'll kind of stop the throwing stun grenade animation and it'll switch to knifing them and obviously as i alluded to earlier face off can be really good it's kind of the best mode to get the challenge done as quickly as possible because the game modes are shorter you have a few enemies but you haven't got loads to focus on and it's they're nice small maps however there were a few times i didn't actually get the challenge done in a particular match so i'd have to wait to the next one and do it and that can be really annoying so if you find that you're not getting the challenge done before the match finishes in face off nuketown can be good as well and other longer modes like that so that you don't end up finishing the match and not getting any kills because it's better to have a slightly longer match and actually get the challenge done rather than doing a shorter match finally you don't have any progress and then need to do another match and potentially more so obviously that's not really helpful for you so if you keep struggling like i say choose the longer matches like nuketown and other game modes as well like free for all and stuff like that but yeah so a good strategy is to sort of run around and get one or two kills then be a bit more campy and hold down an area to get the last kill so for example if you're on nuketown maybe like run to one side of the map try and get one or two kills around the house maybe at the front or downstairs or even upstairs or in the garden and then once you've got those two kills and you need to get one more to get that three kill streak and you're kind of being a bit more careful hold down around the house more stay in there don't be looking out the window to the other side of the map or don't be looking down the alleyways or anything just try and stay behind cover use the cover in the map to your advantage obviously like i say as well if you're struggling to get this challenge done so like for example if you keep dying on one or two kills camp behind an object or near an objective or high flow area so for example behind the fence on the side alleyway of the house on newtown or behind the wall of a doorway or something wait for enemies to run past and obviously you can stab them in the back or whenever particularly sort of dark parts of maps windy flank route and great hiding spots are really ideal for getting this challenge done and like i say if you're really struggling you'll just have to kind of wait somewhere for people to run past and kind of stab them unsuspectingly and that can be a good way to try and get three kill streaks done but it's, it's probably better to get one or two kills in a life first rather than trying to wait for this first kill because then you'll be there forever and you might die whereas if you get one or two and then you wait you can either hopefully get this kill to make it a three kill streak or you die and in which case you try again but yeah that's probably the best way to do it if you're really, really struggling and obviously if you're running behind an enemy just bear in mind that you shouldn't use the knife 
animation until they are close enough for you to actually kill them. So often it will seem like you're close enough, but when you go to knife, it actually won't knife them because you're slightly too far away. And if you do that, what will happen is that they a, a may hear you because you've pressed the knife animation and the, your character goes to lunge at them. But also, when you do press the knife animation, if you're running up behind someone and they keep running, once you press the knife button, your character stops moving, it kind of lunges at them with the knife and then it will miss them. And then you obviously then have to catch up to them again, so you have to sprint up to them. And obviously this can make noise, it can slow things down, and in that process you can obviously die as well. So only wait until you're right behind the enemy and you know you're within knifing distance and then, then go for the lunge and hopefully you'll get to the kill. Obviously as well, when you're using the knife, try to crouch or make less noise with your feet when running to try and avoid making them aware of your presence. Obviously Ninja is the perk we put on, it's good, it does make footsteps quieter but they can still hear a little bit, it's not perfect. And so you still need to be careful with how much you're running, what noise you're making to avoid them turning around and shooting you because obviously that's not what you want at all. So those are kind of the main tips for multiplayer, some of those obviously transfer across to Warzone but now let's talk about Warzone in particular, how do you get this done if you're free to play and you're struggling with the challenge. So obviously like I said there's a few other modes you can try like the limited time modes like Warzone Rumble, the Kingslayer Trios one that's there at the moment and obviously free to play weekends can be good as well. But if you haven't got any of that what do you do? Well Warzone Plunder is really good here is what you do. I'm sure most of you guys are aware of this method, but I'll go through it anyway. So you want to stay in the plane until you're kicked out. Important parts of the class setup include the double time or EOD perk, it's up to you. You can then put on the high alert perk in tier 2 and the tracker perk in tier 3. You can then obviously put on dead silence as the field upgrade so that you can have quiet footsteps when you run and also you sprint faster, meaning you can get towards the enemy quickly and it prevents you from sort of having to run around the map chasing them. So what you want to do once you put on that class setup, stay in the plane like I said until you're kicked out, drop with the other players, some of whom may be inactive and then you can either when you get close to them and drop on the ground with them you can either repetitively knife them in the back until they're dead or you can shoot them into last stand and then knife them to get the challenge done so it should count if you kind of shoot them into last stand and then knife them that will still count as a knife kill because you've killed them with the knife despite the fact that you obviously shot them into last stand remember not to shoot them completely to death so you can knife them otherwise that won't count and try to stop teammates or enemies getting to and killing the down players before you do obviously that will stop you from getting this done properly you obviously want to use your dead silence field upgrade or double time perk to kind of run over to the enemy faster to kill them quicker some players will obviously instantly kill themselves to kind of respawn more quickly when you put them into that last stand mode so don't mess about don't waste time doing stuff get straight over there as soon as you put them into last stand go and knife them straight away because you might die they might die they might kill themselves anything could happen and you want to get that kill with a knife as soon as possible and then sort of similar to kind of multiplayer once you've got that first kill try and go for another one and then you'll have to be much more careful with how you do it now sometimes you'll be lucky and there'll be three people there for you to kill in one go but a lot of people try and exploit this method now so there'll be sometimes a few active players as well so you've just got to try and do the best you can if there's active players obviously try and take them out first and then go for the inactive players but hopefully you could get three kills with this combat knife all in one go when you drop out of the plane at the end when it kicks out all the inactive players but I kind of doubt you'll be able to do that all in one go but it will at least help you get one or two kills within life and then you just have to be very careful at getting that third kill but obviously this is a lot easier and quicker in multiplayer so ideally you want to be trying one of the other modes or actually getting multiplayer but if not then obviously that's the way to do it if you're free to play warzone so if you follow all those steps you should hopefully be able to get the e-tool melee weapon in black ops cold war it looks decent it's pretty cool to use it's definitely not my favorite melee weapon it's kind of a bit more slow and obviously it takes one and a bit hits to kill someone so basically take two hits normally unless they're partially injured then it you can probably get away with one but um it normally takes two hits to kill them and obviously if it's a bit slower as well it's not ideal but who knows maybe they'll improve it it looks pretty cool either way and it's nice to have in the inventory so hope you found it useful if you did be sure to leave a like it really helps me out and feel free to subscribe with your post notifications turned on to stay up to date with all my latest black ops cold war and warzone videos also feel free to check out my cold war camo guides guides for unlocking other new dlc weapons i've got a few of those so check them out on my channel and obviously i've got best class setups as well for these new dlc weapons and again you're going to want to check that out for example the Farah 83 from season 2 i made a best class setup on that recently so make sure you're not missing out on that and if you want some advice on how to level up your tiers faster or to enter that cod points giveaway Way, check out that video as well there'll be a card for that on screen and a link in the description but thank you so much for watching hope you found it useful and i'll see you guys all on the next video